just felt a drop, two drops, three drops. It's like rain is coming for sure. <laughs> I should win. I should win. We got one. The size of this thing. Welcome to the Amazon, ladies and gentlemen. The Amazon. A region and a river like no other. It's the lifeblood of Brazil, a giant jungle wilderness that's home to fantastic wildlife and a remarkable array of people and cultures. Today, it's a region on the edge, caught between its rich traditional past and its fast-moving future, between those who wish to exploit it and those who want to protect it. And that's why I'm here. I'm Brazilian, born and raised in Rio. Truth is, I've always dreamed of visiting the Amazon. But I left Brazil before I could see this extraordinary place for myself. Now, 20 years later, at a crucial time for my country and this region, I finally have that chance to experience and explore my unknown Amazon. So right now I'm in the only town for miles around, and these people are part of the seven million folks that self-identify as Ribeirinhos, the communities that need the river to survive. Ribeirinhos have traditionally lived off the natural riches of the Amazon, with a culture that's inherently linked to fishing. So I'm here to find out who these people are and if ultimately the Ribeirinho lifestyle might soon be a thing of the past. With industrial development and climate change on the rise, Ribeirinho communities have been struggling to survive. But Tefe, the largest town on the upper Amazon and a regional hub for transport and produce, seems to be doing pretty well. Some of the best chefs in the world claim that the new global gastronomic frontier is the Amazon. The flavors that come out of this region, I mean, they're coveted around the world. Ah, então isso aqui já vem a mistura das folhas com as folhas para fazer o. As a Brazilian, a lot of this feels familiar. But there are some things here I've never seen anywhere. O que a gente tem aqui? Isso aqui é a farmácia da natureza. Farmácia da natureza? Prepara a garrafada ali, misturada. Ah. A doença de prótese, de fígado, de gastrite, de vegetais. O mururé. Men are filth. He said there are lots for aphrodisiacs. He has 11 children, so he said that it's thanks to this. He said it works. Maybe I should get one. Tefe, in the heart of Amazonas state, sits within one of the most biodiverse regions in Brazil and at the edge of one of its largest areas of unspoiled rainforest. With no road system, this region is dominated by the river. And Tefe, like all Ribeirinho settlements, big and small, on the Amazon, is a fishing town. Tambaqui. Né? Uh, he's saying that this is the tambaqui, which is one of the most popular fish here. It's really delicious. But he said that it's, it puts up a fight. Nothing compared to the pirarucu, which is much stronger and much larger. The pirarucu, or arapaima, is a river monster that I've heard about since childhood, but never seen. Aqui tem pirarucu, não? Não, não. Lá 
Bom dia. Tudo bem? Você é o pirarucu? É. These huge fish used to be the centerpiece of the Amazon fishing industry. But because of habitat loss and overfishing, they've become harder to find. You need muscles and you need good timing, because it's a really smart fish. <laughs> Is that we're going to eat it raw? It's not common practice here, but... No laughing at me. Now, it's one thing to see this iconic Amazonian fish in the marketplace, but I want to try to experience its legend alive. Unlike much of the upper Amazon, often considered a bit of a backwater, Tefe is home to plenty of young people and, quite honestly, it feels aspirational. You know, it's a small town, but you see there's a lot going on. Lots of motorcycles, lots of music, people dancing, people drinking. It feels authentic. It feels close enough to what I know as Brazilian, because I was born and raised in Rio, but distant enough. They seem to walk with pride. They're saucy, spicy, sexy. I like it. But Tefe is just my first stop on this trip. And I'm looking for a guy who I hope is going to be my passport to a whole other Amazonian world. Pedro? How are you, man? How are you, guy? The famous I'm Sandra. happy to see you. I mean, I've always dreamed of coming to the Amazon. I remember I was a little kid, and I remember looking at maps, uh, reading books about what the Portuguese found in the Amazon. And uh, it's insane because I've traveled to over 60 countries, and I've never been here. So for me, it's really a personal journey. But you live this. Right. You've been here for over 50 years. Being a Ribeirinho, it's the way to live, the way the population prefer to be happy. Do not, they, don't, they cannot earn so much, but they can have fresh fish. They can live off from the river. Fishing is a way of surviving, the main way of surviving for this community. Yes, the river have so many thousands of species of fish, and it's the variety of, uh, of wildlife. I think it will amaze you there. The people which are living in remote areas and by the river, they follow the rise and fall of the Amazon. The river are the roads, you know. Yeah. They have to deal with the wild, plus they have to deal with the distances, and they have to follow the laws of the river. You have to adapt. You have to be adapt. That's a matter of adaptation. That is the right word for it. I'm happy to show you the big Amazon jungle. I'm in good hands. Tefe is a bustling crossroads where people from all around the region gravitate for education, healthcare, and trade. It's a world away from the original Ribeirinho lifestyle. And to see that, I gotta venture much deeper. I'm curious about what I'm gonna find in these smaller communities that live a more traditional lifestyle. These settlements are only accessible by boat, and like most journeys in the Amazon, this will probably be a long trip. It's time to learn the ways of the Amazon River from a real Hiberin. Pedro, do you know I, I am, I, I told you I used to be a break dancer. Do I told you? You did tell me that you uh, used to be a break dancer. I, I never forget. I will show you how to keep a good balance in a boat. <laughs> so many years in the Amazon. I'll show you. <laughs> I'm scared. Don't be scared, my buddy. Don't be scared. You can try if you want. No. Woo! <laughs> Let's go, pode ligar. Holy shit. Bye. <laughs> I'm in good hands.
but let's be honest. My first Amazon fishing experience is not quite the adrenaline rush I was looking for. It's so hot. The sun is so strong. Believe me. Hey, Pedro. What? I'm ready to pull the net. I'm going to start from here. You hold there. Don't release. <laughs> OK, I okay? won't release. Pedro. Yes. Trust in nature. So indigenous tribes, they say something. The gods are mightier, but mightier still is nature. Remember the music. Just a little patience. Oh, Guns N' Roses. <laughs> Who knew? Woo. I caught you. OK. <laughs> OK. Oh, we got one. Yes. We caught the piranha. I'm glad it's moving, because if I was a viewer, I'd be like, they bought that one. Something is struggling in here. Oh, oh we got Opa. it. I told you. One. Wow. I told you I was your lucky charm. Luck, yeah. Beautiful color, huh? Lovely. Paco. Well, that's as good as today's fishing is going to get. Sandro says that big fish are getting scarce here but he assures me I'll be seeing and maybe even catching much bigger fish later on. Eehoo! Keep the balance, man. Wow. Now that's open, is it? There was this renaissance of young Hollywood people. Like everyone was sneezing fame all over each other. From the network that brought you Dark Side of the Ring and Dark Side of Football, now it's time to unravel the 90s. The era that brought us grunge, reinvented hip hop, and gave birth to the internet. We're all doing what we were supposed to do, and this is how it ends. Dark Side of the 90s. Series premiere Thursday at 10 on Vice. Existing beside the living river means that Ribeirinho fishing communities have long accepted that the only constant in their flooded forest homes is change. Every community has one of these stairs. Oh yeah. The Amazon cycle means that in the dry season, the river is low, leaving huge areas of mud bank exposed. And the community built this? Uh, they build it often because they get washed. Rain erosion. During the torrential rains of the wet season, the river swells dramatically. As the river rises past these steps, this entire community, known as Makari, and its 150 residents, becomes a floating village. Uh -huh. So they're saying that this place is not going to exist very, very soon. Every time that it rains, this place is practically unlivable. So they have to dismantle everything that's here. And if they're lucky, bring that to the next community and rebuild everything once again. The natural flooding cycle of the Amazon has always been a disruptive phenomenon to Ribeirinho communities like Macari. During the rainy season, this low-lying area floods for hundreds of miles in every direction. But with global warming, the frequency of extreme flooding has increased. Macari used to be forced to relocate every five or 10 years. Now, it's every single year. It's crazy that they build all this. They have a life here. Right. And then a year later, they have to move, you know, yeah. unpack everything. Climate change is, uh, is affecting the Amazon. The houses are built on stilts and designed to be portable. But some families still tough it out here even when the river rises. Fogão tá aqui. Entendi. Boa tarde, tudo bem? Dá licença. E ali é o, seria, o, é o banheiro e aqui é o... Estão lavando... So, this is 
pretty much the setup. Here's the kitchen, here's what they consider the living room, here is where they wash dishes and also the bathroom, and they sleep over there. So yeah, they're saying that during the rainy season, they lift the floor up, they build a new one, this old one stays down there, and they have a canoe. So everything they do is basically on the river. It's hard to express how mind-blowing this is because the water gets up here. I'm, I want to say 20 feet. It's pretty crazy. Como é a vida aqui? A vida é difícil. É difícil, não é? Eu tenho 13 filhos. 13 filhos. Que mora aqui. Não se sente sozinho nunca? Não, os filhos estão aqui todo o tempo. Loneliness is not a problem within the community. Vai, Louro, vai. Vem, Louro. Vem. Aê. Você é simpático. I like you. Yes. I like you. Toma o Louro aqui. Dá o pezinho, dá. Pronto. Sem nunca ter visto a minha cara, com tanta gentileza, uh, I'm just thanking them. They've never seen me, and they opened their doors and. Se vocês quiserem vir, está no rumo da comunidade, eu estou aqui mesmo. Foi. Obrigado, querido. Ribeirinhos are known in Brazil for their self-sufficiency and pragmatism. But this, and their geographical isolation, has turned them into a marginalized and almost invisible society. When it comes to government, they do not get enough help. Uh, they say that they feel left behind, they feel forgotten. They think that this jeopardizes not just their lives, but their culture. They wonder if they're going to still be here in a few years. The Upper Amazon is not just one river, but a labyrinth of channels that are revealed when the yearly floods recede. And in dry season, with water levels low, progress can be even slower. So with that, we've decided to push upriver through the night. I mean, the Amazon offers moments like this. It's really challenging surviving here, tougher than I expected. But the Ribeirinhos are remarkably resilient. These people, they understand the river and they are witnessing daily what's happening here. In a way, we're protected, we're shielded. We have the luxury of choosing not to believe climate change. These people don't have that luxury. You know, these people feel it every day. There was this renaissance of young Hollywood people. Like everyone was sneezing fame all over each other. From the network that brought you Dark Side of the Ring and Dark Side of Football, now it's time to unravel the 90s. The era that brought us grunge, reinvented hip hop, and gave birth to the internet. We're all doing what we're supposed to do, and this is how it ends. Dark Side of the 90s. Series premiere Thursday at 10 on Vice. Today, we're heading into Mamirauá Reserve, the largest protected area of floodplain forest in Brazil. Once famous for huge numbers of giant pirarucus, this area was massively overfished in the 20th century, leading to the decline and disappearance of many communities. But today, this iconic Amazonian fish is making somewhat of a comeback, and I'm here to meet a legendary guy who can tell me how they brought this species back from the brink. Seu Jorge is known as the master fisherman who has brought old age fishing techniques back into this community. I mean, it looks like a small town, you know? But right now, there is no sign of Jorge or anyone else. Com licença. Olá. Eu tô procurando o seu Jorge. É depois de 
Essa areia tem uma casa, a outra é a dele. Outro monte de areia. Qual o seu nome? Luziliana. Luz... Luza. Ô, seu Jorge. Oi. Muito prazer, tudo bem? Olá. Tava te procurando. Ah, é. <risos> prazer. Okay. Tá com calor? Calor. Muito <risos> quente. Tirar Sério? a camisa pra refrescar mais, né? É comum um besouro assim, desse tamanho? I'll never complain about a cockroach in my house ever again. Oop. <laughs> so Jorge came here 30 years ago, when the area was in serious decline as a fishing community. Aí então, quando eu me mudei para cá, ainda existia um pouco de peixe depois. E acabando, né? Uhum. Aí foi o tempo que o Márcio lá de pesquisar o macaco aqui. Aí do macaco, aí depois que ele estivesse já trabalhando, né, aí ia funcionar uma área... Uma reserva. É, uma reserva. Uhum. Eu não sabia como que era a reserva, né. Até eu estava em dúvida, né. Os, os pescadores, peixeiros, né, que vinham de baixo falavam assim, olha, vocês não devem aceitar isso aqui não, porque acho que depois que virar uma reserva, vocês não vão poder cortar nenhuma vara, nem tirar nenhum peixe. Uhum. Mas depois, com dois anos que eu comecei a trabalhar no Amira lá, eu fiquei percebendo que não era assim, né? Uhum. The community was able to make it illegal for people from outside to come inside the reserve and fish. The fish here have to be run, caught, eaten, sold by the locals, which is really the definition of sustainability within the Amazon. É o peixe, né? Sim. The success of Mamirawa Reserve has led to a resurgence of the pirarucu, the Amazon's most prized food fish. And when it comes to the pirarucu, Seu Jorge is the expert. Reza a lenda <laughs> que o senhor consegue dizer o peso de um pirarucu só ouvindo o pirarucu se mexer dentro d'água. É, só, só pela... De ouvir ele boiar, só já diz o tamanho e, e já diz o peso, né? But it's strong, it's not an easy type of fishing. Ele é muito forte, né? É. Mais forte que eu. Ixi. <laughs> it's, uh, it's stronger than me, he's like... Way stronger. <laughs> Mas vai ser uma honra. I said, I'm honored to, to go fishing with him. Now, one thing's for sure, few communities understand the art of fishing as masterfully as the Ribeirinhos. 20 years ago, there were about 2,500 pirarucus here, and now apparently there are up to 200,000 pirarucus, and that is a result. So Jorge is hurrying to get the nets out, because he knows something I don't. <laughs> it's like rain is coming, for sure. Just felt a drop, two drops. Three drops. Tá chovendo. Tá chovendo. Tá? Então, we got one. Cadê? The rain has arrived, but so have the fish. The size of this thing. Oh! Oh! Hurricane Pirarucu is officially here. Welcome to the Amazon, ladies and gentlemen. After all this happened, I, I just found a hood. <laughs> but fortunately, Sir Jorge knows that at this time of the year, the rain won't last long. They said that it's starting to mellow down, that it's going to go away. Before the rain came, he's like, it's gonna rain in 20 minutes. It did. Now a couple of minutes before it starts dying down, he's like, it's about to die down. It starts dying down. The pirarucu is known as a fighting fish, but because of the storm, these two have been in the net for almost an hour and have not survived to put up a struggle. Look at the size of this thing. No, this is four or five feet, both of them. 
They're massive. So heavy. It feels like sandpaper. Eu acho que quando eu comecei a pescar, ainda não tinha muita prática. Eu pescava mais, era de malhadeira, assim, ó. E depois que eu fui crescendo, aí já foi pegando a prática, já parpoar o peixe, né? Sim. Entendeu? Ele disse que é um... É um aprendizado de processo. Ele disse que, no começo, você não sabe o que você está fazendo. A não ser que você seja como eu, que nasceu para pescar. De repente, <risos> chega aqui, pesca, pesca desse jeito. <risos> não. não. To keep fish stocks healthy, Mamirawa's fishermen can only harvest 30% of the adult pirarucu population outside of the breeding season. So every single catch counts. There was this renaissance of young Hollywood people. Like everyone was sneezing fame all over each other. From the network that brought you Dark Side of the Ring and Dark Side of Football, now it's time to unravel the 90s. The era that brought us grunge, reinvented hip hop, and gave birth to the internet. We're all doing what we're supposed to do, and this is how it ends. Dark Side of the 90s. The series premiere Thursday at 10 on Vice. Some of our catch is being cooked up for tonight's dinner. So I've offered to help Luza, so Jorge's neighbor, in the kitchen. Luza's been fishing with us all day, and as in the Amazon, our meals are very much river to table. She's offered to show me how to prepare our fresh fish. Aí as mulheres se uniram para a pesca do camarão. Aí elas fizeram parte da associação. E isso foi aqui na reserva. Aqui na reserva. For generation, the role of the woman within the Ribeirinho culture was strictly to take care of the kids and to cook. And, and the man was the breadwinner, or the fish winner in this case. And she said that Mamirawa, when, when it became a reserve, that changed a little bit because they started uh, encouraging, incentivizing women to go out there and fish as well. So now some of the best fish they catch are caught by the women of the community. Você acha que a pessoa que vai para uma faculdade e acaba virando um biólogo, vamos dizer, hum. é, ela consegue manter essa tradição linda que vocês têm aqui? Ó, oh, tem. Tipo, se eu sair para cursar uma faculdade para ser uma bióloga uhum. e eu voltar para o meu lugar, sim, eu vou manter a minha tradição. Né? Eu vou manter a minha tradição no mesmo tempo. Agora, se eu estudar, ser uma bióloga e ficar fora da, da minha terra, eu vou perder a tradição. Sim. Então, eu tenho que aprender e voltar para o meu lugar. O ribeirinho, a, a nossa sobrevivência é a natureza, o rio, os peixes, as aves. Preservar, né? Preservar o rio, as matas, os animais. Então, tudo isso é para o futuro, para o futuro das nossas crianças. Obrigado, viu? De nada. Por tudo. Spending time with Seu Jorge, Lusa and their community reminds me that the simplest ideas are often the best. Tá vendo? Eu, pelo menos, venho para cá. É. It took a spark of inspiration from an outsider to warn this community to what was really at stake here. A river-based economy that, if you didn't abuse it, worked and would go on working for generations. And since then, they've embraced that and now are desperate to hang on to it. So today we woke up with some visitors. Uh, turns out it's the environmental police. It's this big boat right next to us. So basically they navigate these waters looking for any kind of illegal activity. Uh, mostly they're looking for wildlife being trafficked. Oh. 
Dá licença. Obrigado, viu, por receber a gente. Não tem esse equilíbrio de enxergar o todo. Nós temos o, a polícia ambiental do Amazonas que fica lá, em Manaus da sede. Então, de vez em quando, a gente precisa trazer eles para cá para o um combate mais efetivo. It turns out Mamirawa, partly because of the success of the reserve in increasing fish stocks, has become a huge target for poachers and wildlife traffickers. Truth is, illegal activities like these are a direct threat to the survival of Ribeirinho communities. The smell is pretty foul. Below decks is what this team has confiscated on just a week's tour of the region. They have over 2,000 caimans and probably over 10,000 pirarucus. So no wonder it smells like, well, death in this place. But it is mind-blowing. But you can see. It's a bunch of dead animals. Every animal taken illegally puts the delicate balance of nature and sustainable progress in jeopardy. But trafficked wildlife is not the only issue in the area. So, strategies, and the fish is the biggest market today for the trafficking. Yes, yes. So he's saying that this place where we're at, this is a really strategic place because we're near the border of Colombia. A lot of times they go seeking uh, wildlife trafficking, but there are drugs hidden inside the fish. They said actually 90% of the boats have guns, are armed illegally. Peaceful Mamerawa is one of the major drug trafficking routes in the Amazon. But there are no dedicated narcotics police up here so it's left to the environmental patrols to do what they can. Usually what they do is they come from behind because the surprise factor is key. A lot of times they toss the drugs, the guns, and the animals in the water to try to avoid being arrested. The patrol keeps a special watch out for vessels they don't recognize. Uh, it, look, it looks really suspicious. There was this renaissance of young Hollywood people. Like everyone was sneezing fame all over each other. From the network that brought you Dark Side of the Ring and Dark Side of Football, now it's time to unravel the 90s. The era that brought us grunge, reinvented hip hop, and gave birth to the internet. We're all doing what we're supposed to do, and this is how it ends. Dark Side of the 90s. Series premiere Thursday at 10 on Vice. This fishing boat is not local, so the patrol will check it out. They're searching every bit of the boat. The team is on the lookout for drugs and guns but they also check the catch. A hundred and eighty-eight fish in here. They have to measure each one, weigh everyone, and then whenever they're stopped, they need to basically say, this is what we have here. This time, no drugs or guns, and the paperwork checks out, so the catch is legal. The numbers of pirarucu being caught illegally and trafficked out of Mamirawa has shocked me. But the amount of caiman Amazon alligators comes as an even bigger surprise. But out here, caimans, it turns out, are a fact of life and death. Dá licença, seu Osvaldo. Opa! Tudo bem? Tudo. Como é que tá o senhor? Mais ou menos. Tudo bem? This is Osvaldo. He had a traumatic encounter with a caiman a few years back. 
E hoje, a sua perna, qual movimento você tem na sua eu perna? Eu não tenho movimento nenhum. O movimento que eu tenho é com a mão. E botar ela para cá, tirar ela, tudo com a mão, porque o dia que ela tá aí, daí ela não sai. E é ali assim. em cima? Aqui em cima? Aqui nada? Não, aqui nada. Aqui não tem movimento de nada, 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 nada. Aqui, aqui eu embarquei, o jacaré atacou. E esse tipo de acidente é comum, do jacaré pular em cima da canoa? Mas aqui na nossa região é. E já várias vezes aconteceu, desde atacar. Perigoso, até demais. É. Uhum. Porque o, os, os pesquisadores falam que o jacaré não ataca. Né? Só ataca que você mexer com ele, mas não é verdade. A gente que vai vir aqui, a gente tem... A gente que mora num beiradão aqui, a gente sabe... Os pesquisadores sabem, mas é por estudo. E nós não, nós sabemos na vida real. Se nós vivemos aqui, nós estamos no meio dos animais, a gente sabe. Black caiman can kill but they are hunted and killed themselves in far greater numbers. Here in Mamirawa, they're protected and sustainably farmed. And according to Seu Jorge, they are also thriving. Seu Jorge? Tudo bem? Boa noite. Tudo bem? Brincando, é sério? Já aconteceu? Não, é só é brincadeira. Aham. Uh -huh. Estraí mesmo. I entendi. So she just told me that usually the caiman uses the tail to defend himself. So it doesn't matter if I fall or not. If the if the tail hit me and then he tosses me into the river, then I become dinner basically. And then they thought that was hilarious. <laughs> As you can hear. <laughs> I asked Seu Jorge, honestly, worst case scenario, if I do fall, yeah. knock on wood, what am I supposed to do? He said, stay put. He said, because if they hear you struggling, you're done. Lord have mercy. <laughs> The way to find caiman at night is by their eye shine. Can you see this? Olha a quantidade. I mean, there are hundreds. to know what you're doing. The next step is to basically lock, tie his mouth. Then you need to tie his arms. And only then you can bring him onto the boat. At any point he can at attack. Holy This skater is about 6'3". Well, it's bigger than me. It's a yeah, killing machine. So right now, he has surrendered, and it really is important to keep this energy on the boat whenever a caiman is captured. But he said it's like in a split second, he can freak out. I like him. Yeah, big boy. It's your luck. He's a He's a little chubby. <laughs> so strong. It's beautiful, though. It, it's hard to watch when they're captured, but without this work, they wouldn't be here. The caimans are checked for size and sex. 
fertile females and juvenile males like this one are not harvested, and they're put back to breed. I still can't get over the fact that we're surrounded by hundreds, if not thousands, of caimans. Releasing the caiman is just as delicate. And the biggest problem is obviously the, the mouth. You can see that he's releasing his legs first, then he's going to release his arms, then untape, take the tape off his eyes, strategically place with the mouth to the river. Oof. Good night and good luck, my friend. They named the Cayman Pedro. Said, so, okay, first Pedro in the river, and now second. Very funny. <laughs> the sounds of the rainforest. You hear the monkeys. This is the sound of a caiman. Say a bomb me a The Amazon. Caught between its rich traditional past and its fast moving future. Between those who wish to exploit it and those who want to protect it. Fortuna para quem segurou. Si no no hubiera matado mi padre, aquí hubiera estado petrolera. Keep the balance, man. Wow. Unknown Amazon with me, Pedro Andrade. Series premiere Tuesday at 10 on Vice. Muito obrigado. Well, it's time to say my goodbyes. I've really loved spending time in this Hibernian community. But I can't help but wonder, could I ever live in a place like this? That's the dilemma facing the sons and daughters of Seu Jorge, Luza, and other families. In fact, this may be the ultimate challenge for their communities. Nayara, Amir, this is beautiful Nayara right here. Oh. And she is the sweetest member of this crew. A gente pode sair um dia lá? Pode sim, com certeza. She said she's gonna take me out on Tefe, so... Tá bom, vamos ver, hein? Nayara has invited her friends to show me that New York City is not the only happening spot around. But right now, it seems we're out of luck. There's a blackout. To the bon? Apparently, this happens all the time here in Tefe. And Nayara and her four friends assure me the bar will still be open. All five of these young women were born into small riverside communities, but have come to Tefe to continue their education. What they decide to do next will determine the futures of their Ribeirinho hometowns. Daqui a um tempo, idade de Tefe ou não? Eu penso em estudar fora, mas voltar. Mas voltar para cá? Eu, caso se eu for, não quero mais voltar. <laughs> Eu sairia para me profissionalizar, me fazer uma especialização ou até mais retornar para a Tefé. Como é ser mulher aqui? Respeito. Eu Respeito. acho que ter mulher em qualquer lugar é complicado. Ela tem uma dependência muito grande das mulheres, de, do homem, né? Uma dependência tanto financeira, né? Quanto também acho que emocional, não sei. Sim. Uma coisa que eu notei, eu falo isso sem qualquer preconceito, eu tô aqui para observar mesmo. Mas eu notei que muitas mulheres em comunidades pequenas ribeirinhas têm, assim, 13, 14 filhos. Sim. Né? Isso, Isso é. é uma coisa cultural. Se pegar uma menina de 13 anos, já tem filho, ou meninas. Ah. Mas é normal. Você acha que isso é uma coisa... Você, vocês têm esperança que isso mude? Com certeza. A vida da, da pessoa, então, é algo que realmente tem que ser... É, é, trabalhado né, com as pessoas, é, conversado, falado, algo tem que ser mostrado, né? Sim. Oh. Power came back on.
Few communities in the Amazon are as vulnerable as the Hibirinhos. But despite numerous challenges, they've been able to adapt to an ever-changing planet in creative and unexpected ways. I leave this place certain that their essence, much like the river they depend on, is bound to live on. I remember being young, reading letters from the explorers of what they encountered here in the Amazon. I quite often wonder what that was like, and here I am with the Amazonians.